Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. Here the purpose is to inspire your spirit and today's afterlife duo. I hope we'll do that. Now I want to give a little bit of a introduction. These two, um, interviewing these two, I think it's important to acknowledge both of them together. <clears throat> However, I'm not sure who will come forward first. And this particular conversation, I've decided that the casual conversation style really works well, I think, for me to get to know them. So I'm dipping my toe in the water of the energy of these two individuals. And I know a little bit about them, but not a whole ton. Like, I don't know detail information about them. And so... I think just a casual conversation, get to know you kind of conversation, introductory conversation is what this will be. So I just want to be clear on that. A get to know you. Hi, let's get to know you. All right. So this particular woman has been around me for a while and has been sending me messages here and there um, just so that I'm in, that she's in my awareness. And that's happened mostly through songs but every once in a while I actually kind of feel an imagery come forward that is her essence and it is Miss Whitney Houston and with that of course we welcome as well to our conversation her daughter Miss Bobby Christina and so I think it's really important to allow them to come in together however um, Bobby Chris really feels more um, quiet and really cuddling up to her mother energetically is what I see. It's really important for you to know if you're a Whitney Houston fan or a Bobby Christina fan to know that they are together in the afterlife. And it's also important for you to recognize as a human being person, as a human person, being a person, that you can be close to your loved ones who are in heaven, who are in the afterlife, who have died, and you miss them so much, you can still be close to them in your heart. You don't actually have to leave your body to be close and connect with your loved ones who are not in their body anymore. I really want to be clear on that. I think it's really important to know that. All right, so for those of you who are fans of Whitney and her daughter, just know that they are together. And it did break Whitney's heart energetically to know that her daughter was in so much pain and struggling so much. Um, Whitney really bears a huge responsibility for that is what she's making me feel as a mother, that she feels like she really let her daughter down and she uses the word failure as a mother is what she says. And I, she's acknowledging that she was a, a bad example for her daughter and that she recognizes that her daughter's heart was breaking when Whitney was so sick and when Whitney was struggling with her addictions and and it almost looks like she has like a bipolar disorder like a highs and a lows and a highs and a lows and a highs and a lows but I feel like that may be because of the drug addiction part do you know what I mean sometimes drug abuse and drug use depending upon the types of, of drugs that are being utilized um, by an addict it can kind of sometimes feel like a mental illness. So it's like, what came first, the mental illness or the drug addiction? Because the, energetically, the high and the low and the high and the low, the um, bipolar kind of energy feels like addiction to me when I tap into it. So I'm not saying that Whitney Houston was bipolar. I'm saying that she feels like the, the swings of that um, were either caused by the drug addiction and the drug use or amplified by them. I'm not sure which was first. And it doesn't really matter because both are mental health concerns. Let's be clear on that. Drug addiction, drug abuse, and also mental health, mental illness, they're all mental health, they're health, health things, healthcare things. I just wanna say that, Whitney, because I feel like I need to say that for you. Um, to share with you that I have a respect for and a recognition of the struggles that you've had. And although I haven't experienced that myself, I can simply say that I'm compassionate toward those struggles for you and recognize as a mother how impactful that would feel for, for me too, 
um, looking back, I have a daughter as well. And so I can understand that from a mother-daughter perspective, how, how much you would feel responsible for her pain. And then she says, well, I was, quite literally, I was. She says, I was. She says, Bridget, there's no question about it. I caused it. I created the situation and the circumstances that resulted in her pain, which result ultimately ended up in her death. She chose to leave this life because of me, because I am her mother, is what Whitney says. I am her mother. And she wanted to be with me. She was so worried, Bobby Christina, she's referring to Bobby Christina, Whitney is saying, she was so worried about me being alone, me being lonely, because that was the biggest thing that I struggled with was loneliness. I struggled with loneliness. And to fill that hole inside, it just wasn't possible. And she knows that. She felt that. She saw it. She lived it. And it's such a shame. She had such, such a bright soul. Such a bright soul, Whitney says about her daughter. Such a bright soul. Such a bright soul. Bobby Christina is very quiet. And I'm looking at her. She has a very round face and a unique smile. You know, she, I think she has like a little, it looks like a little space in between her teeth. <clears throat> very round face. But her face looks really puffy. So, um... I can't tell if that's like, is that normal? She says, it's the drug abuse. Whitney speaks for her. Whitney says, it's the drug abuse. It, over time, it, she said, there's so much buildup on your skin, underneath your skin, like the cells in your skin. It's like they stretch and they just expand and they just hold these toxins. She says, she says I don't think people realize when they're self-medicating how much toxins are in the drugs that they're using, even the pharmaceuticals. I'm not, I'm not even saying street drugs versus pharmaceutical drugs. I'm saying the drugs that you're using, how much it, it, it gathers and it pools under your skin and it just really builds up toxins and other people can see it. And you can see it. When you look in the mirror, all you see is the drug effect and you don't see the beauty. There's no more beauty anymore. There's no more beauty anymore. Whitney, I, ha I have to share with you that I was not overly excited about connecting with you, as you may well know, because it seems as though sometimes when I connect with spirit that have left the earth with tragedy, you know, with an overdose for you is what basically happened, is what I see. I, kn I know, my mind knows the story that you were found in the tub, unconscious, and that there were drugs in your system. I know that it was an overdose situation, but that, and that's hard to feel and channel people that have that. Quite frankly, it's difficult. And she says right away, she says, I don't blame you. I, I don't blame you for that. It's not easy to live with either. And that's the point. People shouldn't have to live with this. People shouldn't have to live with drug abuse. They shouldn't, people shouldn't have to turn to that, those means of, numbing pain. So is that what you did with the medications? I mean, what was the big influencer for you with your drug experience with with being um, utilizing drugs and then having them be kind of a dependency thing if that's what happened? I mean, how, how did that start for you? Would you mind sharing? I think it's important for other people, especially people who know people that have addictions or, or loved ones or family members or themselves have struggled with addiction, what would you, you know, share that a little bit. Can you share, talk about that? Early on, it was speed, she says. So, okay, so speed is cocaine, right? Because in my head, I can see like white powder and lines. I'm assuming that's cocaine. She says, <laughs> she says, oh, Bridget, you're so vanilla, is what she says. <laughs> you're so vanilla. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, kind of, yeah. Never did that, so. Uh. Um, and so she said early on it was speed and it, and it kept your metabolism high, kept you energized, you know, being able to, to, to do things, to make things happen, to work on things. And then eventually using it to, you know, pick you up when you were, had low energy, when you were down, she says down, I said, I say low energy because I can feel like she's like, oh, I just can't, oh my gosh, what am I going to do here? I need something to help me. Coffee just doesn't do it. It's just not enough. And then 
Um, she says it picks you up when you're down, you know, and you've got to, you know, be on. She's not showing me performing like on stage though, taking, needing to take speed at first to perform on stage. She's showing it to me to like get into the studio or to make records and deal with people, right? Is that more? She said, like, yeah, and then it becomes more recreational too. Like then it kind of comes into your personal life. And so you're using it, you used it maybe at a party here or there, or what have you, and it, it helped you, you know, it, it seemed like it helped you at the time. And so then you use it a little more and use it for this and use it for that. And, and then she's saying, she's showing me that she got prescription right away too. So she's tried, she tried speed, it started with speed, and then she got a prescription to help her. Okay, so what was the prescription for? She says anxiety. It was one of the medications you can use for anxiety. And then, then I got some for depression. And it looks like there were three and then there was a fourth at one point. Are you showing me actually your transition? Because I'm kind of feeling like I'm at the edge of a, a sink a counter on a bathroom and I'm not at my house. I feel like I'm someplace else besides my home. Did you die someplace else besides your home? Did you leave the earth? Mm -hmm. So the tub wasn't at home? I feel like one of them left at home and one of them left in a hotel or someplace else. It kind of looks like a townhouse, but it might be a really fancy, I'm really confusing the two of you. Can we separate you and your daughter? Because I can feel, I know both of you died the same way. Theoretically, like we're not sure when everybody don't know all the details, but I, I know that both were in the bathroom bathtub. I feel like at one of my properties or one of my common places that I stayed or I was staying someplace for an extended period of time. So it felt kind of like a temporary, like, you know, when you sublease something, like it kind of feels like yours because it's your, your home, but it's not like you're, I'm going to live there for three years kind of thing. I almost feel like Las Vegas, like almost like I'm, I'm doing a show or something and I have a place that I often will stay or an area that I will stay. And so I have a place and then I feel like there's a series of shows and things like that. So were you in the middle of things when you died? Yes. In the middle of a, a, a booked kind of an event. It looks like there was multiple shows and it was in the middle of that. Um, but I'd already been sick one night. It looks like I'd already been sick. I was struggling really hard at the end. I was really struggling bad and I really needed help. I needed, you know, but you don't listen. I needed rehab, but I needed more than rehab. I needed um, more than tough love. I needed really strict discipline. I, I don't know what could have saved me is what she's saying. I don't know what could have saved me. So did, okay, so we know how it started. Your, you know, experience, you talked about that with speed and then anxiety and depression medication. And then, um, and then she's like, it was on it and off, on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again. She said it wasn't constant. I didn't constantly do drugs for 10 years, but I was on and off and on and off. It looks like eight dash 10. So eight to 10 years or gosh, you know, before when I was hooking up my microphone, I even saw like 2008 was something pivotal. And then I see, so and then I'm also seeing like 2010 and I'm, I'm seeing kind of bouncing around a little bit. Um, I do know too, Whitney, that you had a reality TV show with Bobby. I know he was like the love of your life. I also know he wasn't faithful. I mean, that's pretty obvious energetically. You can totally feel that energy vibe. I don't know for sure. I mean, maybe I'm, you know, speaking out of turn here, but... Um, she says, oh, but that's, it's not his pro it's not his fault. He's not the reason why I, I made the choices I did. And she's like, no, I'm not blaming Bobby at all. No, 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 um, no. So where did the pressure come from? Where, where did the pressure come from? Where did the, the need to, to be on or to be high or to be whatever, to medicate? Where did that come from? What caused that? She says, my past, my life before Bobby. She says there was a time when, when we were uh, having the baby that everything was so good. It was just so good. It was such a sweet time. And when Bobby Christina was born, it was just, you know, the first two years, I mean, it was just such a sweet time, a sweet time. And I wasn't sure I'd be a good mother. I just wasn't sure I, I, I could do that. I didn't know if I was cut out for that. And it's scary, you know, she's saying, this is um, Whitney sharing this. She says it's scary because uh, 
you just see the world as this really scary place and where there's so much potential for hurt and pain for your child and there's a lot of um, a lot of anguish, angst. She's like, uh, just a lot of worry kind of energy and fear mixed together about wanting to keep your child safe and protect them. But you can't always do that. I mean, you can't do that. Every mom knows, every parent knows that. You can't really do that. You know, no amount of worrying is going to protect your child. You have to teach them wisely. And that's the place where I failed. I didn't teach her in the right way. The right ways of coping. Uh, so, okay, so Whitney, I'm feeling like, like I'm, I'm getting some background information on you energetically, and I think you're just sharing it with me, but you're not speaking about it. So if it's all right, can I talk a little bit about childhood for you? And there definitely looks like, um, for those of you who are watching to this um, interview here at Above Life Channel with Whitney Houston and her daughter, Bobby Christina, is also present, but Whitney's doing the talking at this point. She is sharing with me that I, I definitely feel like and she's sharing as a feeling sensing like I get access I can I can know some of these things about her past it's not an excuse and she wants to be very clear she's like, I'm not an excuse there's no excuse for making making yourself a prisoner to drugs she says there's no excuse for that but I can feel and see, sense energetically, that there was definitely child abuse. Um, child sex abuse is what it looks like. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn or sharing anything that anybody else doesn't know. I don't know the history of the family or the experiences or uh, what have you related to Whitney, Whitney related to your life. She said she was successful young, like she was acknowledged, recognized as a good singer very young and she was involved in the church. It looks like she sang in the church, yes, yes. And <clears throat> people take advantage of you and your family. And, you know, she says, all it takes is once. She said, but it happened multiple times for me. Um, there's definitely an abusive male. There's also a female that was not helpful to her at all, like jealous of her, envious of her. Um, I can see that. She's kind of making me, let me see that. Um, but again, she's like, that's no excuse. And she feels like she was isolated from her family, like she pushed her family away as soon as she was able to. I feel like there's, I'm not sure about mom. I don't understand the relationship with her mom. She's not showing me that. Like, I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy, but I'm also not feeling I hate you. I'm not, I'm not sure about what's going on with mom. Um, I don't understand that mom part. I don't know if there was no mom. I feel like there was a mom around, but I don't feel like it was... Um, She's not talking about it right now. She's not sharing that point. That's not the point of this particular conversation. Okay. But I feel like there's definitely a male, child sex abuse. Um, more than one. It looks like there was potentially two different men um, at different times. One related to Hollywood or that kind of thing and then one related to family or church or some school or something like that. Some place that would be safe. One place that you would not expect at all. And the other was the Hollywood thing which is, she's like, not that you'd expect that but didn't surprise her kind of thing. Um, so that was painful. That was difficult. That was, there was trauma. She's saying trauma, like feeling really traumatized. Ew. Yeah, it's hard to feel that energy of that. Just the feeling of the trauma. Just, uh, no. Um, she says, but I want to be clear. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. And she says, and to answer your question, Bridget, it, it, yes, it was an accident. I didn't try to kill myself. I didn't intentionally try to die. I had tried before. I tried suicide before. I tried to kill myself before unsuccessful. But this particular case, I wasn't planning to kill myself. Uh, are you sure about that? Because I'm feeling conflicted about that. As soon as you say that, or as soon as I, I feel that, I, I feel conflicted like, like, yeah, maybe you were trying to commit suicide. I wasn't what she's trying to say. Okay. 
Oh, I have a huge hit in my solar plexus, my stomach. Oh, it just hurts right now. I just feel like I just got punched in the gut. Um, um okay. So I'm going to ask Archangel Michael to come in. Archangel Michael, will you come in? Because Archangel Michael's a protector and really strong, secure energy. Also for Whitney and her daughter and for myself to just help barrier the energy. So Whitney, what's the truth of the situation of your the moment you know when you left the earth she says i thought it wasn't real i thought it was just it was like a dream it was all fuzzy everything was just fuzzy and and i could hear people yelling and pounding on the door and uh, well, of course you're gonna lock the door you're gonna lock the door because you want privacy it's not something you know nefarious or something that, you know is planning or something i mean yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Okay, so, but Whitney, I know that it feels like you've kind of been able to kind of talk around the topic of suicide or of, um, you know, even addiction and stuff, but you're really f upfront about the addiction right now, which I, I really appreciate and respect that in the afterlife. It's great for people as human people to recognize that you get it. You understand this intensity of how this really affected your life and your daughters, which is where you feel the most remorse. I can feel that. And she's healing, by the way. If you're watching this and you're concerned about Whitney or her daughter, healing, they're healing, they're healing. Um, Whitney, I feel like she's more evolved in move, moving up toward, closer toward light, toward um, a total, complete healing, but she's still in the process is what it feels like to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, and because I think there's this separation between, like, I can't quite feel the truth around your death. And not that it's something that should define you but I think that it's key to your healing is to acknowledge if you tried to commit suicide or if you um, if it simply was an accidental overdose and she says I just wanted the pain to go away I just wanted to stop the hurt and I'd already not been feeling well I hadn't been feeling well for days and I'd been on so many different medications that I was kind of in a fog or a haze anyway and I think I just took that lethal next dose and it knocked me out unconscious and I wasn't able to. I passed, I basically passed out in the bathtub and I drowned. That's what happened to me. And anyone that's ever been drunk or had a blackout experience or anything like that from drugs or, or alcohol or, or any kind of illness or whatever would understand that you do black out and you just don't remember anything and you don't know what happened and that's basically what happened that's what caused my death was actual drowning if if everyone i i think that's important for you guys to know that that that's what caused her drowning. she drowned is what it looks like but it doesn't look like she took an it doesn't look like she took on purpose tried to take a bunch of meds is that correct the yes ma'am yes ma'am however there is a ton it looks like a pharmacy in your bathroom she says, I, I, I don't argue that that's a fact. That's a fact. And it looks like yellow, like a yellow bottle or a yellow pill or something. Um, the dosage of something. It, it just looked like it's toxic, toxic, toxic. Just building up and building up and building up. It doesn't look like there was too many at one time. It was like that was the dose that just tipped over the edge and created blackout experience or scenario, passing out and then the drowning. Yeah, she said, yeah, yes. She said, it kind of felt like I was paralyzed. And I was kind of, and everything was foggy and, and I, I knew I was dying. In my heart, I think I thought, oh, I, I think I, I felt that was possible, but at the same time, I didn't believe it was actually possible, happening, was it actually happening? Because I had tried to kill myself before and um, Bobby found me one of those times and, uh, you know, some of that stuff's not public, Bridget, you know. I, I have struggled with not just addiction, but um, with my emotions for my entire life. And there is a lot, there are a lot better ways to manage your pain, to heal your pain. Alcohol, drugs, it just num it numbs it. Tem it's just temporarily, temporary, temporary numbing. It doesn't really do anything you wake up and then all that pain is there again it's, 
you can't really escape. So it was it was pretty surreal, and uh, I can see a white, an angel that's all white, and an angel that's gold, which I kind of love that gold angel. That's Archangel Azrael, who helps from um, spirit from heaven to earth to fully transform from human body into spirit. And uh, she says she sees her daughter just screaming, screaming over her body, um, just screaming. And I don't know if that's the funeral I'm seeing, or she's seeing she's showing. She acknowledges and is in full recognition of all the pain that she caused her daughter, and that's why her daughter um, is here as well. But her daughter's so connected to mommy, mommy, mommy. She looks like the energy that Bobby Christina is bringing forward isn't that of a young woman. It's that of like a four-year-old child. She can speak, but not a lot. Three or four years old, maybe even. Just really connected. Like a toddler connected to your mom. That's how she feels. She's very much earlier on in her healing process. I would say 2014 seems pivotal. I don't know what that has to do with anything. And then two years later, 2016 is what I feel. Um, I don't know what that means. 2014 is pivotal. And then I see two years later. I don't know what that means. Um, I know there's a lot um, around um, Bobby Christina's passing and I really can't feel her too much because she really feels like it's she feels very vulnerable um, but I want everyone to know that just because I'm feeling the spirits this way it doesn't mean they're stuck it doesn't mean they're ghosts it doesn't mean they're not in heaven both Bobby Christina and Whitney Houston have loving energy of God the creator the source around them with them they're not trapped or anything like that they're just you can just, uh, I as a channel can just feel the energy in a different way than I might feel somebody else who is fully embraced the spirit essence of themselves. They definitely, these two both definitely feel di and different parts of their path and their journey to heaven um, because that's kind of what it is to them. They're not not in heaven though. I want to be clear. I don't want people to be worried about that. They're totally with God. They totally have, but they, they have so much of their human life kind of overlaying on them and so to me that means it's hard for them to let go of some of that and so they're working on that process is that an accurate reflection yes she said that's a beautiful beautiful way to describe it she says and she big smile by the way when i'm looking at whitney you know how i see her i see her with her hair a short and like in a bob and kind of a curly like a perm or something that's how i see her that's just really beautiful face and just gorgeous smile and very kind you know, charming. She's charming, I would say. A bit charming. <laughs> but she's real. She's like, oh, well, we're talking girl talk, Bridget. It's real. We can talk real, right? And I'm like, yes, we can. That's right. Um, so her daughter is with her. And we're not going to focus on her daughter. I'm not going to do that at this time, at this point. So, so if you've been watching me talk, Whitney is on this side of me. And Bobby Christine Energy is on this side. However, when I feel them, I feel Bobby Christina just cuddled up to her mom. Like, mommy, mommy, that's how I feel, you know? So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that was, uh, this is pretty intense for me. And so, but I, I'm hoping that for those of you who are watching that connecting with Whitney Houston has in some way helped you. Maybe it's inspired you to think about the whole um, a concept around suffering, around people self-medicating, around drug abuse, around mental health, around um, abuse and child abuse in a different way. Perhaps maybe that's what it's done. I'm not sure. Maybe you can tell me <laughs> in the comments below. What did you get out of this initial conversation? with Ms. Whitney Houston. What did you get from this? What did you, what is your takeaway? Your one takeaway, what is it? Go ahead and post that in the comments. I'd like to know, I'd like to know how it's impacted you today. And as always, if you have a, if you have questions or comments or, or what you'd like to share about Whitney or Bobby Christina, this particular video is really focused on Whitney. So that's where I'm going to stay focused. I will try to do another video in the future to incorporate her daughter when it's appropriate to do that. So um, we'll be open to that. I'm open to that and we can connect and talk in the future as well. So go ahead and put your comments below as well. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, thank you for being willing to be seen. I'm a mom too. I totally get it, Whitney. I totally get it. I get how you feel. 
about your daughter. I totally get it. All right. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thank you for being here today. I hope that this conversation, this afterlife interview has, has inspired you and given you some hope today. Remember, this is your life now. So live it. Thanks for being here.